Hello, I'm Ducko. I'm a duck. And today I've got something special for you. You remember those stream of consciousness tournaments? Well, this is kind of like that. Except I asked people on Twitter and other places to give me a character. So, aside from one character, they are all from other people. Some of them, I might not even know that well, if at all. Some of them are well known, though. It's a nice little mix. Nice, nice little mix. Little mix. I don't even remember where that's from. It must be Ribbit. I'm not 100% sure, though. It must be Ribbit. <laughs> Is it? Mu does, does it must be Ribbit? <laughs> Anyways. Tournament. Tournament bracket style. Different characters. I think you get it. Uh, please be forewarned. This is not all 100% logical. You'd be like, no, that character is hyperversal and massively, massively faster than light plus a billion times infinity. D no, don't bring that. Don't bring that here. We... As as Black Panther in the movie said, we don't do that here. At least not on this segment. This show, it's, that's not really a show. It's just something I do sometimes. Anyways, first matchup. Starscream from the Transformers, who was suggested to me by GM Spectre, versus Static otherwise known to most people, I think, as Static Shock. Although that's not his actual name, that's just the name of the show. His name is just Static, as like a character. Or Virgil Hawkins. Who was suggested to me by Make Mine Amalgam. They are, oh yes, by the way, Static is a either a DC character or a Milestone character, which was an imprint of DC that wasn't originally in the DC universe. You, you don't... Yeah, but yeah, you, what you need to know. But what you need really need to know is Starscream is a giant robot who turned into a fighter jet. He has a laser gun, and he's, like, very silver-tongued and, like, tricky and a backstabber, and he always wants to take over for Megatron at, like, the drop of a hat. Static is a superhero. He became that way. Because there was like a big explosion. It birthed a lot of superheroes around that area. And they're called Bang Babies. Weird, but there you go. Static. He also eventually figured out how to control like the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Oh, oh, oh dear lord. Starscream, in any other situation, I would count him as a pretty high up competitor. But you've got a guy that could control electromagnetic pulses, and then he later also figured out, like, all the Magneto shit. Uh, I'm sorry, Starscream, but you're out. The winner is Static here. Static just crumples him up into a ball. <laughs> okay, the next one is Mako from Kill a Kill, who was suggested to me by Z-Dog, and Raiden Shogun from Genshin Impact, who was suggested to me by Brando. Yo! He's been on the channel before. Now, Mako is the best friend of Ryuko, who has, like, a half-naked Venom suit. Mako, herself, has a bowl cut, but also, and she's very hyperactive. She's nice. She has this two-star Goku uniform, which uh, has, like, spiky, like, sleeves coming out. Looks like she has a baseball bat. Barbed wire on it. I haven't seen all of Kill a Killer, really. But she seems like a fun enough character. Raiden Shogun is from Genshin Impact. She is a lady who is actually electric, like Raiden from Mortal Kombat. So I also assume she does that thing where she flies forward and she pulls a. Oh, she's the one that pulls a sword out of her boobs. So a sword and a baseball bat with barbed wire. This seems this sounds like like a street fight, kinda. Aside from like the powers and shit. 
Like, this is, like, in the, the goddamn Warriors or something. But anyways, uh, uh, electric powers, I think, are pretty effective. Again, granted, like, Mako... I don't think Raiden Shogun has, like, metal control, like, static later figured out, but... If she keeps going to the... That, that, that's going to be a pain in the ass for Mako. I didn't even bother to pronounce her last name, Mako. She has a last name. Mankan Shoku. Mankan Shoku. I don't think... I'm not going to make like a joke that like having a two-star Goku uniform means... Oh, she has the power of Goku. I don't really think that's how it works obviously he, he, this is serious business this is serious business here clearly but they, if Raiden just keeps going <laughs> that's gonna be a pain in the ass I, I feel like ultimately Raiden Shogun will triumph with the electricity and the shooting herself forward which is something that she does clearly she's also a Shogun so and the Shogun Warriors are, like, based off of Mazinger Z and, like, a few other robots. And, like, on Mazinger Z, like, they shot the, the, the lady robot. She shot her boobs out as missiles. And then they came back. Uh, I'm going to say Raiden Shogun can do that as well. She can pull swords out of her boobs. It doesn't seem too out of the question to me. Or maybe it is. D just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Builderman from Roblox versus Builderman from Roblox was suggested to be my jacking in, jacking out. Uh, glad you're not doing some other kind of jacking. I, I don't I don't need to see that on here. The opponent is Johnny Lawrence from Karate Kid slash Cobra Kai, the newer show. Now the Builderman from Roblox is just like a Lego guy basically, who can just make a bunch of shit. Oh, it's an inactive account that was used to send a welcome message to... Well, he doesn't He doesn't show up. He doesn't show up is what he does. Johnny Lawrence, I don't even have to explain, he is... He was like a bully kid in the 80s, but like he later learned his ways and he grew as a person and he started teaching karate from that, but he also has like an intense rivalry that caused a lot of shit with Daniel LaRusso. But the Builder Man doesn't even show up. This is disappointing. I'm sorry. But he doesn't even show up, and Johnny Lawrence wins by default. The next matchup is Blixer from Just Shapes and Beats. Suggested to be my Maddie is the Mouse. Or Maddie is Mouse. Why did I say Maddie is the Mouse? There's no other mice. Their opponent is Sinistar from the 80s arcade game. Sinistar. I put that one in there. I had like a small list of ones that I used a random number generator to put in here. All of this is random number generation for the matchups until we get to like the second bracket, in which case that's just like the characters moving on. You, you get it. But what are these? Who are, who are these characters? Well, Blixer is apparently just called the boss because. Blixer is apparently a common fandom nickname because it doesn't have a name in the game. It's a floating pink head that corrupts things, and it splits into three different parts. And uh, it's a it's a circle. It's a goddamn circle with devil horns. Sort of. It's got. It looks angry. It's got one eye. But uh. Sinistar is kind of similar. It's a floating space robot face thing that, like, taunts you and says, Run, coward! And you have to, like, mine asteroids with your spaceship to, like, get Cinnabombs to blow them up by the pieces. Now, uh, Corruption... I don't know... What's, what's, I guess Corrupt the Files on Sinistar... How did... Sinistar a robot or just, like, a alien or I am very vague on the nature of all of these characters but I am my instinct tells me 
that this sort of like poisonous corruption possibly doesn't work on whatever Sinistar is probably a robot of some kind is giant and this guy is just a this blixer is sir no the this guy like glitches things out sort of, no attacks with a round spread of round spikes coming out from its head it soon absorbs round spikes until it powers up giving its core appearance it grows arms and hands okay so it get and it eventually fires lasers from the eye but in the end the boss's arm is turned to point out before punching it, the boss explodes and shrinks shrink shortly after. Sinistar, I think he just eats people up close. Uh, okay, I'm changing my vote. So, uh, this thing could just, like, throw Sinistar and shoot lasers at it. That would work. That would work, I, I think. It's not Cinnabombs, but, like, I, I, it's, it's a no limits fallacy to say, like, only Cinnabombs could kill Sinistar. Sorry, Sinistar. Our next one. Luigi from Mario, suggested to me by LMH Productions, versus Herbert West from Reanimator, suggested to me by Max. You all know Max. Now, Luigi is the Mario brother, the brother of Mario. He goes along on those adventures. He also, y you know who Luigi is, I'm pretty sure. Herbert West is a scientist who was obsessed with reanimating life and he created the reagent which can like create like zombies or something however you want to say it that serve his will and he also used it to like enhance himself later on and he did different things with the reagents now uh i'm gonna say i i i can barely imagine how this fight goes down this I know Luigi's scared of spooky shit sometimes, even though, like, it's some stuff that he's taken on before. But, like, what 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 happens here? Does Herbert West just inject a needle in Luigi's eye, and then, like, Luigi's eye just, like, blows up until, it, until like, this weird thing, until it explodes? That's what happens. That's what happens. Sorry, Luigi. That's what happens. I'm saying that. That's what happens. Herbert West wins. The Bloop was suggested to be by Nemesis Bloodreich. Chris from Thomas Was Alone was suggested to be by Mule slash Toxic Napkin. The Bloop, it's like a big giant fish that is camouflaged. Big giant whale fish sort of thing made a weird sound. It was an ultra low frequency, high amplitude underwater sound, so it's like some kind, sort of like sonic ability in that. Chris from Thomas was alone. You can tell I'm. I have to look up some of these characters. That's a square. He's a grumpy little square. He has a very low jump height. He hates a guy named Thomas, who I have to assume is also a square. Now that's a rectangle. He eventually becomes a hero, though, this square. He can't jump well, but he does work with others, but that's outside help. I feel like the bloop is just going to do the weird loud noise, and it's just going to rock him back. Plus, he, I don't see him underwater. He might drown. Does he have lungs? I don't... It's a block. But the bloop, the bloop could just eat it. Eat, eat Chris as well. Sorry, Chris. But it's the bloop. Now we have one with characters I know both of. Pac-Man versus Tommy Oliver from Power Rangers. Pac-Man was suggested to be by the Loon Tune. Like Looney Tunes, sort of. Tommy Oliver was suggested to be by Emerald. Now here's the thing. Do you mean like he is just the guy before without the Power Ranger stuff? Is he the guy with like all the Power Ranger stuff? I know as just a guy, he like kicked a t-rex something like that he has fighting skill but he's like green ranger white ranger gold ranger black ranger a, a different red ranger a different red ranger uh just generally speaking he has like basically like armor on him and some kind of 
blade weapon, and he has a giant robot that he summons. Pac-Man has a mech, and he grew giant before. <laughs> Pac-Man... I, I didn't even explain the characters. Pac-Man is from the arcade game. He goes around in the maze. He eats dots. He, you know who Pac-Man is. He eats ghosts when he gets the power pellet. Tommy Oliver is from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers originally. He was originally an outsider created by Re who was granted that power. I don't think he was created. I don't think he was like birthed. Tommy Oliver. He was just given the power by Rita Repulsa. But later he became a good guy and later he's now like the most revered Power Ranger or something like that. He's taken on other Power Ranger roles over the years. So... I think, like, it starts out, it's a Power Rangers battle. It starts out, he goes in and he just, like, eats at him. He, he like, starts kicking it, kicking Pac-Man around. Did I, did I call Pac-Man an it? I mean, it says man in there, so I should probably say he. But then Pac-Man, like, grows giant, and Tommy gets in the Zord. Which Zord? Though. It, ha it has to be, like, one of the ones that he just had by himself. Not, like, a Megazord. Because that requires the other Power Rangers. So, the Dragon Zord, the White Tiger Zord. I think, though, Pac-Man just starts taking bites out of the Zord. And that's a big problem. And he's just gonna <laughs> eat Tommy Oliver. Oh, my God. I I is there something he can do? Tommy can do about that? If the, the Zord is just, like, chomped to bits? I don't know. I am reluctantly giving this to Pac-Man. You may disagree, but who knows. Our last matchup of the first bracket. Princess Peach from Mario versus The Undertaker from WWE, WWF, whatever you want to call the wrestling company. Princess Peach was suggested to be by, of course, Adam Gregory who has also been on this channel. And The Undertaker was suggested to me by Second City Soldier slash Kyle Young. Now, Princess Peach, she's a princess. She gets kidnapped by Bowser, but she has, like, some level of, like, magic and other skills. The Undertaker is an undead wrestler who puts people in coffins and says, rest in peace. And he has some level of, like, magic himself. This is quite a matchup, Princess Peach versus The Undertaker. I will ultimately have to side with The Undertaker. Because, like, Undertaker's method is, like, capture somebody and then trap them. And Princess Peach just, like, she's too used to falling into that. So Princess Peach is going to get buried in, alive in a coffin. She might get out later, but, like, I think for this match... This, that counts as a win. So I'm going to have to go with The Undertaker. I'm sorry to the Mario characters. There's two of them. Not anymore. Not going into the next round. Now we're on to the second bracket. Our first match is Static versus Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun. Raiden Raiden. Whatever. Now, I, I have to call it pretty early. Static... I, they, I said before, they both have electric powers, but Static can also manipulate metal. She has a sword. Static is just going to, like, drive that back to her. That That's screwed up, but there you go. It's just, I gotta call it. I call it how I sees it. <laughs> Sorry. The next thing. The next thing. Uh, the next matchup. Johnny Lawrence versus Blixer. Now, Johnny Lawrence, reskilled at karate. I'll even give him the benefit of the doubt that the video game, that one weird video game for Cobra Kai, gives him ice powers. Blixer, though, it's just a giant thing that, like, shoots out lasers and has grab arms. I just throws Johnny Lawrence against a wall and shoots him with a laser beam. Poor Johnny Lawrence, he won his first one on technicality, and then he just gets beat up. He's he's gonna, he's gonna be pissed off, but I don't see anything he can do about it, unfortunately. 
Now, Herbert West versus the Bloop. Uh, he injects the Bloop with a reagent needle, and that causes the Bloop to, like, blow it up, and it, but he makes, like, the biggest, noisiest noise ever, but then, like, it blows up, and, like, Herbert West suffers, like, permanent hearing damage, and he's, like, rocked by it, so he has to reagent himself. What happens is he's deaf now, but he goes into the next round as, like, a weird fucked up monster, man. Now, Pac-Man versus The Undertaker. This is unfortunate for The Undertaker. Pac-Man eats ghosts. That is, he's, like, a direct counter to The Undertaker. He's not going to get in the coffin here. Pac-Man eats a power pellet, and The Undertaker just, like, his eyes float off back to the middle. And then, I guess Pac-Man... Pac-Man is the winner of this match. Words are very unnecessary. Oh, I'm getting gonna get copyright striked for singing that song in the middle of this. Anyways, our next bracket would have to be Static versus Blixer. This is like the semifinals, I think. Now, Blixer has proven to be a mighty opponent, despite me not really knowing about them as much towards the beginning of this. Static, I feel like, could just manipulate the energies back at Blixer and just blow him up. That probably works. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, yeah, I, I vaguely know about what Blixer is. I mean, Static can fly around too. And it just, he's well suited to taking on this sort of boss from what I'm seeing. Now, Herbert West and Pac Man. Herbert West is coming to this with. He's deaf. So you won't hear Pac Man coming, but he's a big monster man. Does he count as, like, a ghost? He, obviously not, like, phasing through walls and shit, but like, he's undead. I said that it counted against the Undertaker and the other one. He injected himself with the reagent to, like, help himself and revive himself from near death. Because, like, what I said for the bloop, like, the bloop just doesn't survive that. It, it brings out a big attack that devastates Herbert West, but... Only one of them has any method of, like, surviving it. Ultimately, I will have to say that Pac-Man does just eat Herbert West, because he injects a needle into Pac-Man. Pac-Man, the thing is, I think Pac-Man has consumed worse shit than, like, hypodermic needle injecting, like, reagent stuff into him. And he, he can just grow big and, like, get the toxins himself out of himself that way. So, yeah, Pac-Man time. Pac-Man fever. Now, here's our last one. The last matchup is Static versus Pac-Man. Pac-Man, I think he's dealt with electricity before. And even, like, metal manipulation, sort of. Has he? I... Don't see him flying as much. Static has the ability to fly, but... Pac-Man has done some things that have allowed him to fly, like Super Pac-Man. He has to get a lot of power-up. He has to get a lot of power-ups to keep up with Static. I feel like, though, ultimately, with all the power-ups, he has methods of taking Static down. But the thing is, I also think Static is tactically smarter. I mean, he figured out from electricity powers that he can also manipulate metal, the electromagnetic spectrum in general. So, I feel like Pac-Man has more, but Static is tactically smarter. Hmm. This is a tricky one. This is a tricky one when I don't think of, like, oh, the, the, he, Static, punched Green Lantern in the nose one time. Omniversal. Or, oh, Pac-Man, uh, you see in, uh, Doki Doki Panic Literature Club... That was only released in Japan. Pac-Man, he... He killed... a uh, fucking... Someone from Dot Hack. Which makes him... And a Digimon. It makes him Omni... Whatever. Not that shit. I'm actually thinking of their fucking powers. And abilities. Hey... Okay, just... I just gotta... Does Pac-Man have... Pac-Man... Does he have electromagnetic abilities? 
geometry of Pac-Man like nano magnet. Pac-Man molecular expressions. Build a so. Oh, magnet. Oh, he has a magnet. It's like a magnet though. No, but it like creates like a circle around him that expands outward and contracts back into him. So it's not like a, just a regular ass magnet that he's just flopping around in his hands. Steel ball power up. He has the pack mobile. He has beams. He has fire. He has a Galaxian ship. Golden Pac-Man. Kinky mutation. Uh, what site have I gone on to? Oh, you know, Pink Kinky is just a ghost. Okay, with glasses. They're probably into some weird shit, but who knows? Golden Pac-Man. If he does any of his metal power-ups, though, that can be used against him. But he has magnetism himself. He does not. He has a radar. He has regen, shatter, sonar, stealth. Tornado trap, tornado. The thing is, okay, optics he shoots out laser beams. Pac Man, that would be manipulated against. Okay, ultimately, okay, I gotta say, goddamn motherfucking static, probably. I'm seeing nothing about electricity. They both have magnetic manipulation, but electricity and the tactical knowledge and more experience in using it and the, it not being like just some weird thing that spreads outward then contracts inward and that Pac-Man has to collect it or like pull it out I feel like I ultimately have to say Static wins this Static is our champion for the Ducko Shuffle Tournament congratulations to Static congratulations Congratulations to Make Mine Amalgam and everybody who participated. If I gave your character a bad fate, I'm sorry, but the, this is just how it is. I feel really bad for Starscream because in the first round he went against someone who could just crumple him into a ball. Who was ultimately the winner of the tournament. There you go. Congrats, everyone. And again, sorry, but also thank you for something. Anyways, have a good night. Don't forget to look at the Patreon and all that if you want, and the Kofi. Uh, good night.